Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. This is part three of the Wedge-Tailed Eagle tutorial. If you haven't already, go check out parts one and two so that you can see how I got up to this part in the artwork. And continuing right along, so in part two we finished off with using the transparent black, uh, the transparent brown black, should I say, and uh, now we are utilizing a white and I'm coming in and I'm further detailing the eagle, so I'm going to add all the highlights, all the bright uh, highlights on the feathers, um, the highlight on the eyes, basically everything that needs to be done, and then that will become sort of the finish tone. I'm going to add some other tones in there as well, but realistically finish this artwork off and make it as realistic as possible. So adding more of the stippling or the real fine dots around the eye area there and you can see how much that's uh, making that whole section look 3D. You can see how close I am with the airbrush. Uh, the airbrush that I'm using at the moment is the Iwata CMSB Micron. It's a side feed airbrush. It runs a 0.18mm needle nozzle setup. And for this sort of fine work, I'm running at about 18 to 20 PSI with a 30% paint, 70% reducer mix. So again, it's going to depend on your the paint that you're using. Um, so whatever you, brand you're using just and whatever sort of mix works for you and your level and skill of airbrushing will be what you should use. So adding highlights is always uh, my favorite part of any artwork. It just really brings the artwork to life. Uh, I tend to always do it the second last tone so that I can clean up any of the overspray that I may get from uh, the white, um, depending on what I'm working on as well. So if I'm working on a synthetic paper, I don't usually use white paint. I will then uh, scratch back and expose the white of the paper. Um, on a canvas, I generally use a paintbrush to do a lot of my white highlights if I want real defined ones and then use the airbrush as well uh, for a softer white highlight. So depending on what, I, what I'm trying to achieve. You can see there uh, how I had the stippling all laid out and then I've done a softer white highlight over it to sort of soften it out and uh, knock out some of that detail. So I like to work that way as well. I always tend to put a lot of detail in to start with and then I can knock it back and adjust it as per reference as I go along. Adding some of those softer highlights on the beak there just to make it look uh, uneven. So you want to really create an organic texture where needed. It doesn't want to be too super smooth. And just uh, controlling my overspray as well and you know, wherever I want that white to be sharp, I'm working nice and close. I'm going to add the highlight into the eye. And to do that, I'm using a stencil by Airshot Stencils. This is Texture 1. It's got all different uh, nice little textures and different shapes. 
And uh, the other template I'm using at the moment is one of my fire tool templates. Uh, this is obviously designed to be used for fire, but the shapes work really well for all different applications. If you want any more info on any of the products used within this video, then uh, check out the description. I'll pop some affiliate links in there to some of these products and you can click on them. That'll give you more info or you can purchase. Um, if you do click on them uh, and you do go ahead and purchase, you don't pay any more for the item, but it does help to support this channel. So always much appreciated and I do hope that they help you out as well. So if this is the first time watching one of my videos, then welcome for all of our regular viewers. Welcome back. I do hope that you're enjoying part three of this uh, video tutorials uh, so far. And if you are enjoying this video, by all means, give it the thumbs up and share it out. And if you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon, and that will notify you every time I put out new content. So just using that white to pick out some of the real bright white highlights on the edge of the feathers. Again, nice and careful with this. I'm not trying to overdo it, but I do want to um, just try and distinguish some of those areas. Okay, so now I'm using a orange by Createx Illustration Colors and just going to brighten up some more of these feathers. And Createx Illustration Colors are transparent, so no need to add a transparent base. You can if you like, if you want to make them even more transparent, but uh, straight out of the bottle there. They're good to go. You just mix them up with the reducer if you like. I know a lot of people uh, like to spray them unreduced, but personally, I like to run reducer in all of my paint. And I'm also using that orange just to tint the eye a little bit. And coming in to further detail the eye with some sepia. So just add some of those uh, shadows in. You can see it's uh, sort of eliminating my highlight a little bit, but I've uh, still got the shape in there and because uh, white is opaque it will go back over the top of whatever I've done so I'm not too concerned about it at the moment.
And while I've got the sepia, I'm just uh, adding some more of, well, darkening some of my shading that's already in there, just cleaning it up from the white overspray and adding an extra layer within that stippling effect. And now switching back to white, I'm going to further build some of these highlights and textures. So as I said earlier on in this video series, this uh, particular artwork is very layer upon layer in order to get that uh, more three-dimensional appearance. So just take your time and uh, create those layers and that's going to help to create a more realistic end result. So a few final highlights, just re-brightening up that highlight in the eye that got affected earlier with the uh, sepia shading. So using that texture one template again in order to do so as well as some of the fire tool templates. And there we have it, the completed eagle ready for clear. This has a intercoat clear on it to protect it so that uh, it could be taken to the painter and he can uh, then water wipe it if he needs to. You can see all the detail there and just uh, the build up of the feathers and how all those colors are popping. The clear will obviously bring it out even more so I do hope that you enjoyed checking out this uh, video tutorial. Until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.